Greetings people of Earth, it's Rabbit and today we're going to be reviewing the Anko Virtual 7.1 Gaming Headset in case you couldn't tell that from the thumbnail or the title of the video uh, This is a Anko headset uh, which is a budget brand uh, sold I think exclusively through Kmart Australia it might be sold elsewhere around the world, maybe American Kmart, I do not know but yeah, I'm Australian so pricing and stuff is going to be in Australian dollars uh, this headset costs $45, and I use the term budget loosely because for me, budget is $30 or less. And once you start getting up to the $45 price range, it starts going beyond budget, but everybody's got their different perceptions of such things. Anyway, before we continue, uh, I will be covering the uh, comfort of the headset, the overall quality of it, the features, as well as the sound quality. But before we get going as well, um, yeah, it's a typical blast blister pack. This is not an unboxing as such. Um, it comes with, yeah, heat shrink blister pack that you've got to cut off those really sharp edges with. That can be a pain to get into. I didn't have any difficulty opening this one. Anybody who can operate scissors should be fine. Also, I'm going to say don't judge the audio quality yet going by how it sounds because this is not the default audio settings. And I'll also cover that in a bit more detail as we go along. Also. Um, if you look at the back of the included cardboard slip, it covers some basic features of the headset. And yes, that is a mini CD that it comes with that has some extra audio software, which I will also go into more detail about. Uh, just getting to some of the specifics here, it's a 40 millimeter driver, it's 32 ohms impedance. Um, sensitivity is 96 plus 3 de decibels. Uh, decibels. Yeah, decibels at 1 kilohertz and frequency response is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz if that matters to you. Uh, the inline features is it has this control panel here which is referred to as a virtual 7.1 surround sound card. I'll also go into a little bit more information about that and the cable length is 2.3 meters and this headset works both on PC and apparently Xbox One and PlayStation 4. I will be covering the PC side of things because I don't own either of those consoles, so I won't be able to comment on how they work. Uh, but they connect via a included three and a half mil cable. Now I just want to make that clear too, because um, as I don't own those consoles, I cannot comment on the audio quality, and your mileage may vary. Because well, with PCs, the th thing about them, as we'll also get into as we go along, I'm saying that a lot. Uh, you've got a bit more control over what you can do audio quality-wise with a computer. So anyway, I have downloaded some screenshots from the Kmart website for uh, page for this particular product. And we'll do a quick jump cut here and I will bring those up so you can get a better look at the headset instead of me having to take it off and hold it up to the camera and so on and so forth. Then we'll get on to the real meats and potatoes of this product. Okay, so without further ado, jump cut time. So yeah, first up we have what it looks like in the packaging. This is what you will be seeing if you're in the store. Just your yeah, usual blister pack fare. That's what the product looks like outside of the package, front view. And you may notice as well that you can see a little circle down on the right bottom of the headset. That is the boom mic, um, which is currently retracted in that picture. Something else we will cover. As a side view of it, now, as you could probably tell at the start of the video, those vents light up on the headset. And that's what it looks like outside of the package, including the 7.1, quote unquote, surround sound controls. Now, that's basically got, yeah, volume controls, mute, mic on and off, that sort of thing. Uh, there's the earpieces up close. They've got a green material inside of them. Uh, the, head, the earpieces themselves are made of a black vinyl. That's very soft, but will cover the comfort and that sort of thing. And there is the control panel up slightly closer. You can see some switches on the side there with a bit of white writing. We'll get up a bit closer, but as you can see, it's a standard USB plug. I think it's USB A or USB B. I forget what it's called, but yeah, basically your standard USB as most people would know it. And as you can see here on the side, there are a, is an extra volume control and a mic on off switch and you can see PS4 and Xbox One written on it because I think those controls are exclusive to the consoles. The buttons, I believe, 
may only work with PCs. And yeah, again, you have to plug in that extra cable to get those controls working. I mean, it's not going to work with those um, with the consoles if you don't have that cable plugged in. So it's a moot point explaining that. But okay, there we go. You can pause the video as you choose and have a good old look if you want. But back to the main review. So hello again. Okay, first of all, let's have a quick look and discuss some of the functions and featurealities. <laughs> featurealities features of this headset. As we can see, yes, lighting on the tip of the microphone, lighting in the grills on the earpieces. Uh, first, I want to say is this green here. That's it. You are stuck with it. This is not an RGB headset at all. What you get is what you see. So if you don't like green, you're going to sort of be stuck. Uh, but I have a RGB mechanical keyboard, so I can you know match the color to that level of green. Um, it's probably looking a bit washed out due to this webcam and the lighting in my room at the moment. Um, but yeah, first problem that we'll see with this is, as you can see, I've got a green line there. So if you're doing a stream, yeah, you're going to have to deal with having a green line on your face unless you move it away like so. And of course, as with any microphone, where you have it positioned is going to be a difference. Now, the other thing is too, like say if I put the microphone here, because it is a, you know, bendy, flexible mic, is like if I have it up here, I now have a green light at the corner of my eye which could be a distraction when you're playing games or doing a stream or whatever you're going to use the headset for. But if I put it down to about here, I can no longer see the light. And as you can see, this is what, how it sounds. So, yeah, same thing. It's, you know, green seems to be the theme, including the material, as you saw inside the ear pieces. Now, we have this inline controller here. Now, this is apparently... They call it a 7.1. You can see it's got 7.1 on the red flashing light there, which is strange. It's red considering everything else is themed green, which flashes once the USB is plugged in and it's up and running. Uh, what we have here is the volume control. These two buttons are control volume up, volume down for the headset. And then you have a, make sure I get the right ones here. We have a speaker mute, where if you hit that, that mutes. Um, the volume on the headset, uh, vol it mutes the audio through the headpieces, so you won't get any sound. And then we have this microphone on off button, which as you can see, if I press it and it turns off, you can tell it's turned off because this light will go off. And then it goes back on when you turn it on. And this is also a retractable microphone. So bear with me as we go. I don't know if you can still hear me properly there. And then we go. Meow. So, yeah, that can be in handy if you just want to use it as a headset without the mic. You can do so. Um, but yeah, I'm always wary when I see things like that because I worry about, you know, how often, how long the durability will be going in and out, in and out, sort of thing like that. But yeah, there's it where you go. Now, unlike a lot of headsets, you there, there is no adjustment. Like, see, they, they don't, there's no sort of, cur they don't move around that much. A lot of headsets can be fixed. And where adjustment comes from, because these also don't slide up and down, as you may be used to, like some headsets you'd be used to, it's sliding along these rails here. Instead, what it is, I'll just take this off for a second to show you, um, is this strap that goes over the head here is sort of springy. And that's what adjustment, as you pull it down, it stretches down as you pull it up. Yeah, so they're sort of springy. But it, it clamps all right to my head. I'm finding it very comfortable. It feels very light. Now, also, these look like they've got big, thick foam pads on them. But as you can see, these would have to sink into somewhere, the actual plastic and hardware. And they're about, they're not really all that thick. Um, I'll hold it up closer to the camera so that you can get a look as I sort of squeeze the foam. So, 
so yeah, you can see the foam is about as half as thick as that but i'm finding they're extremely comfortable they completely close off your ears now i'm a big guy with big ears i stand at six foot seven to give you an idea of how i am and as a big guy they are comfortable i have a problem with a lot of headsets even large over the ear ones where i end up getting a bit of chafing around here now, yeah i get a bit of chafing on some of these just with some of these ones even if they fit they just end up rubbing all the foam padding doesn't keep the actual speaker parts off my ears or the grills off my ears so they i've got hard plastic and stuff rub against them and get quite sore but so far it's not so bad um the only downside is and you're going to get this with i guess any non-opened headsets is um like with me i live in a warm climate i live in the tropics you can see i'm a little bit sweaty at the moment because it's quite a hot day as australia is moving from outer spring towards summer um so yeah your ears will get hot um i've worn these for quite a few hours I've worn them for like a three and a half hour game stream. Uh, I did a Dauntless one the other night. And yeah, unfortunately, the audio quality didn't sound as good as it does now. But overall, I'm, I'm kind of happy with the comfort. Um, it can't be helped that my ears are going to get all hot and sweaty. So occasionally you will need to take a break and air out your ears for a bit. I can even feel them getting sweaty now. Um, they don't block out the noise in the background. Like right above me now, I've got a ceiling fan. I can hear that. Now, if I was playing a game or had some music or something, I wouldn't be able to hear it. But they don't cancel outside noise. Uh, but I've got to say, yeah, audio quality-wise, the sound is quite good on these things. Like that, I've got no complaints. Um, I've actually had to turn down the volume um, because, yeah, if I, if I turn it up sort of over 30, because like this control here too... It doesn't adjust the volume inside the headset as such, like some volume in inline controls, like I'd say like this volume control here for the Xbox and PlayStation. This actually controls the volume control on your desktop. Yeah, unfortunately I haven't got my OBS set up to capture my primary desktop where it shows you, but you know, when you're using volume controls on a keyboard or something, get a little slider show up on the screen. That's what that does and what that brings up. Sound leakage. I can say this is pretty damn good for a budget headset. Now, the sound quality has been okay with me, but I'm not fussy. I have tried expensive brand names, you know, like Beats by Dr. Dre or whatever they're called and other ones like that. And I've got to say, for how much you pay, it's just like you're paying for a brand name a lot of the times. A lot of the audio quality, because I tend to be a sort of person who does go for $20, $30 headsets as well, because I honestly quite often can't hear the audio quality. And again, on a PC, you have tools and controls that you can tweak things in, which we shall also be covering soon. But yes, apparently this here is meant to be a USB sound card. Inside the hardware is by a Taiwanese company called C Media. And I guess I should go address this earlier. As to the 7.1, honestly, these the stereo on these things are very, very good, but I have tried what some surround soundy sort of test and honestly I can't hear it so um, I thought the included software that comes with this product might do something relating to that but yeah genuinely um this yeah you can hear things when they're behind you or in front of you but no better or worse than normal stereo and I don't know any other further way to test it other than playing games but I haven't got any games installed at the moment that have a 7.1 audio. So I'm going to say also going into this, don't believe the hype on the package. Just go into buying a headset like this with for having good stereo. Um, I think I've already covered the lighting and the fact that it's not RGB and you're stuck with that. But overall, I've got to say they're comfortable. I should be able to wear them for a long time. But also sound leakage, absolutely none. My other headset, which was also an Anko brand one, $30 from Kmart. Um, that was one with sort of more rectangular. I don't have it with me at the moment to show you. Um, that headset, I could basically put it on my desk and use it almost like desktop speakers. Like I could take it off, walk over to the door here and still hear everybody on Discord. Um, it was quite loud and it leaks down a lot. But with these headsets, I can take them off, hold them about this far away from my face, like so. And I hear nothing. 
when I put them on, I could be watching a YouTube video or playing a game and it's almost deafening. It's almost like make uncomfortable on the ears. I don't like things extremely loud. Um, but I have them at what I would consider a normal level, what people, most people would play before they're like, oh, that's going to make my ears bleed. And yeah, i got to say, no leakage at all. So somebody can be standing behind me and they won't hear anything. So that was quite impressive. Um, but let's get on to the, the virtual 7.1 and that software and that CD disc. And then I'll talk about the setup of this device and the audio quality. Because like I said, it's the way I sound now. Um, I haven't got it perfected. I've, I've just got into it really quickly because I've only owned this headset for about two days now. Um, and so my testing has been fairly basic. Um, but yeah, this is not the default setting. So we'll, we'll load up a couple of control panels and things like that, show you my desktop how I've got it set up and how it comes as default, as well as what the default audio quality sounds like. And then hopefully I can get everything back to how it is sounding now. You'll see two icons on my screen, NVIDIA Broadcast and Zia Audio Center. As I showed you on the back of the packaging, it shows a mini CD. Now my computer, desktop computer, despite being newer, I've got a DVD drive in there, so I can access all my old discs as well as I have DVD movies and things like that. And I'll never know when I decide, hey, I might want to watch some Lord of the Rings or something. But a lot of modern PC users no longer have an optical drive. So it's something to keep in mind here that even if you want to use the software that comes with this product, you are going to need a way to transfer it, say, to a USB drive or install it. Because this is pretty much what it is. And I've got to say, it's very disappointing because I thought this might be what you need for the virtual surround sound. Now, if I click that shortcut there, this is what you get. You get a very basic control panel. Now, this headset, it works straight out of the box. If I'm running Windows 10 Pro, I plug the headset into the USB port and Windows went bada bing, bada boom, installed the drivers, default drivers, and it worked out of the box. And the audio quality, honestly, is the same as if you're using this. And this is what you get. It's very bare bones stuff. And you click around. Um, obviously, you, they've got these check boxes here that if you uncheck them, yeah, things stop working. We have a volume control. Then we have a left-right balance and an overall master volume. Again, it's nothing amazing, but as you can see, there's nothing there to referring to a virtual 7.1 or anything 7.1. And you get a whole bunch of things like EQ, blah, blah, blah. So you have to, if you're not familiar with those terms, you would have to go and Google them to see what they are. But a lot of it's irrelevant for just basic headset use. Uh, if we, we have, um, like up here, we click that. Uh, that's your... You know, do you want it on your toolbar sort of thing? Do you want it to, um, yeah, you get a startup message at the beginning. I hate those sorts of things. You can adjust the transparency of the UI. So if you're into that sort of thing. And whether you want a tray icon down on your taskbar. And that's about it. If you hit this information button, it will open up a bit of information. And there's the website of the company. But as we can see, it is 2020. This is a new headset. And the copyright is 2012. We get some driver information, firmware, because as I said, the inline control is supposedly a USB sound card, um, and a whole bunch of these sort of brandy type things. And you've got to actually, if you hit detail, you'll see we get these things here. I have no idea what this GFX and LFX is, a version number, and then the date 2011 or incorrectly, I don't know if this is the 11th of the 3rd or the 3rd of the 11th, but it's 2011. So this software is like nine years old already. And that doesn't really matter because, I mean, if, if it works and it still works today as intended, that doesn't really matter, but that can be off-putting for some people. Now, if you follow this link here, it will open up, let's exit out of that, yeah, this web page. This is the media site. These are the people who either make the chipset that's in there or they make the software for it. And you can see PC, Mac, PS1, mobile, 7.1 channel virtual sound around headphone and environmental noise cancellation. But also, as we can see here, by NVIDIA Broadcast, I'm actually using NVIDIA Broadcast's noise cancellation at the moment, but I will get around to showing you how this works without the noise cancellation using NVIDIA Broadcast and just using what comes with it. So yeah, there's that to think about. Um, 
And, uh, and here's the other thing too. Yeah, not everybody's going to be able to use NVIDIA Broadcast. I don't know if AMD has something specific because I believe NVIDIA Broadcast and their voice app are designed specifically for RTX cards onwards, which would be the 2000 series up. And after 2000 series, there's only the 3000 series, which is fairly new. Uh, the other option we have is to switch to the profile panel. Now, you've got these settings up here. Hi-Fi mode, which is basically stereo. Then we've got this movie mode, music mode, and manual. Now, I'm not going to, and I don't even know if manuals like, so you click it, nothing happens. I thought that might have to open up a user manual. The documentation isn't very good. Uh, on the website, I cannot find anything about it. Now, there is no Anko website uh, because that's been shut down. I saw articles about yeah, Anko shutting down their storefront and other stuff. Again, you can just Google Anko and you'll see that. Most of that relates to the US. So I don't know how that affects Australia's Kmart. But yeah, if you go to support, you're going to be in for a good time because, yeah, I couldn't really find anything to do with manuals relating to this specific device. Um, I haven't been able to look in details because you get all these numbers and stuff and like PDFs. And I think this is just for generic chipsets and things. And you have these downloads, but a lot of them, as you can see, 2016. Not really going to see a hell of a... Oh, there. So 2016 is the last that they've gone to, which is four years. And I just couldn't find what matches, which I probably could do if I, again, went into here and... Um, let's put it back here. If I went into, like, your info... There's surely got to be something here that matches something on their website. There may be one of these version numbers or something that would get me a little bit further. But, as I said, it works out of the bat. And you don't really need this software at all, honestly. If you can't get the CD to work, or you have no way to do it, don't worry. Just use Windows default drivers and you'll be good to go. In saying that, though, I think we really need to get on to seeing how the audio comes as default. And this is going to hopefully help some people with any sort of USB headset because a lot of USB headsets are going to do what I'm about to show you and you won't, and a lot of people just aren't aware of it. This is why I tell people, you know, learn how your hardware works and understand it and then this sort of stuff won't happen to you. I like to use the old school Windows control panel here. Um, now, I already had it set up. You can see the taskbar icon down here where, you know, you click sound. Uh, everything's coming up on my other monitor. Then you hit the recording tab, and as you can see, microphone, USB default device. If you click properties, you get a bunch of things. Now, yeah, I've got to see what that AGC is. The headset comes with some effects. So if I click echo, hit apply. I don't know if this will transfer through properly, but there should be an echo effect. Uh, there's a systematic voice mark which literally will just give you a new voice. I don't know if this is picking it up, but if it is, it sounds. Um, but yeah, it is just basic, like a voice mod. Okay, so as we can see, I've got the audio level set to 75. If you look down here, I have uh, exited NVIDIA Broadcast and I have switched OBS over to capture the headset directly. So what you are hearing now is how the microphone will sound out of the box. Uh, I can't hear it myself yet, but I'm going to imagine that it sounds muted, stifled, and a lot lower volume. Um, and hopefully I can give a demonstration here of where you slide it up to, say, 95%. And, oh, the apply button's not going to light up there. Hopefully it's working in real time then, and you'll hear the difference in volume as we do it. So, yeah. I'm going to suggest, well, I mean, yeah, if you load up, reload up our NVIDIA broadcast here, which again looks like it wants to load up on my primary display, you can see, yes, I've got the noise removal turned off. So, yeah, there's something to consider. I also notice now it's probably picking up background noise and audio because I can see the mic meter on um, NVIDIA's, I mean, on OBS going up and down um, hell I can maybe bring this over here so you can see it um, let's turn off the live cam and there you can see when I'm not talking 
that volume bar is going up and down. Now, if I set it back to how I had it, which is, yeah, microphone USB audio, turn noise removal on. Let's get this back over here. I'll show you how I set it up. Uh, back to the control panel, sound. Uh, recording. Uh, oops, wrong one. We want the microphone USB device. Here, yeah, there we go. Properties. Levels. Now we'll put that to 95, where I had it before. And like I said, I've still got to tweak it to get the sound quality uh, a little bit better. Hit OK. And then we'll go down here to OBS and switch back to the NVIDIA uh, sound settings. So, uh, which is not showing in OBS now. Awesome. Okay, so it looks like I'll have to restart um, the OBS recording to get that to show up. Cancel. Okay, so now we should be back into using the NVIDIA broadcast. I'll show you here. I get properties, and you can see now we have the NVIDIA broadcast. So, yeah, had to restart OBS to get that to show up. But as you can also see, now the microphone bar is not moving except for where I talk. So that's what I meant by at the start of the video, so not go by the audio quality you hear now, because to be honest, out of the box, the microphone audio is quite arse, and it can actually get better with a bit of tweaking. So I do have to experiment a bit more and see if I can get it a tweak. And one could argue, well, what do you expect for a $45 uh, piece of software? Anyway, let's get my beautiful face back up here. Hello again. So. Yeah, this software here it is completely unnecessary. And to be honest, once I finish doing this video, I'll be uninstalling it because it just, honestly, it doesn't offer anything. Um, and if you want to get surround sound stuff, I'll bring up my desktop again. Um, Windows has some stuff built in. If you click your speakers down here, if you right click it, you'll see it's got spatial sound and you have a couple of different options. Now, this is the Windows Sonic is built in. And costs nothing then you have dolby access and dts sound unbound which i believe are like trial products you can use them for a week for free and then you can go and buy the app um, which i believe through the windows store which i'm not a huge fan of but if you really need that virtual surround sound this windows sonic for headphones here is the way to go so yeah there you have it um i Got to say, $45, you can do a lot worse if you are on a budget. I would consider this headset. Um, again, some people might say you get what you pay for. I wasn't expecting the audio to be amazing out of the box. But I have to say that I'm impressed with a bit of tweaking and a bit of work. It's fine. Again, I don't know how to work with a console. But yeah, once, I, once I'm done here, I will get rid of this audio center there. Because, like I said, it's just pointless. Everything you need is already built into Windows. And if you have the right hardware, you can go a step further and use things like NVIDIA Broadcast to take it a, a step up. Um, but yeah, I've tried it in Audacity. I've had no problems with it using any sort of voice app, voice mods, uh, Audacity, video recording software. Um, it seems to work at the same results as we're getting here in OBS currently. But there is something to be aware of because a lot of people will put this plug this in straight out of the box, may do a stream or recording and go, wow, this sounds like ass. But it is a case of you will need to go in and tweak it a bit. And hopefully um, you will see what I did and that will help you get there. I mean, some headsets as well, can, and even your sound control panels can have boot, different types of boosts and things like that. A good example is even NVIDIA's own built-in share, uh, what used to be called Shadow Play has a setting where you can go in and add, adjust microphone volumes, desktop volume, and that's the same with OBS. You can see there's volume controls here. They can go in, and the same thing with OBS. You've got these properties here. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Uh, filters, I believe it is, where you've got filters. And as you can see, there's a gain one here. And with the gain, you know, if you slide it up, It'll basically boost your audio, but the thing to be aware of using gain, 
is it also boosts the flaws in the audio. So a lot of people, if you turn up gain, you'll tend to get a lot of static and things like that. But yeah, that's the joys of tweaking stuff. So yeah, let's get on with a summary, okay? So I'm gonna say in summary, $45, it's not bad. I've noticed that things like this have tended to jump in t up by like $10 since the um, coronavirus has become a thing. A lot, of, a lot of sort of Chinese, Taiwanese made items have had a basically, yeah, $10, even places like PC case gear and stuff like that, I've noticed uh, from AliExpress through to local companies like PC case gear, there has been a $10 increase. So you can either wait till the, the pandemic passes and everything goes back to normal and save yourself 10 bucks. But yeah, because I've, I've seen elsewhere that I think on launch back in August, these were $35. So there's already been a $10 increase in that time. Maybe that was just a introductory offer. But what you see is what you get. Um, I've got to say for a cheap brand, they, they are well built and time will tell. Like I said, it's been two days. Um, they're very lightweight. I find them comfortable apart from, you know, they are hot on the old ears. So you will need to get a, let them breathe a bit occasionally. And as I said, this is also probably going to be more of an issue now that we're moving into summer here, where, I mean, the temp will give you an idea, the current temperatures I've been getting this week have been essentially like above 30 degrees, anywhere from 33 to 36 degrees. So it does get quite warm and I'm also living in humid tropics. But I've had that problem with every over ear headset. So it's also something to consider if you're living in a warmer climate. Um, but as I said as well, it doesn't matter. You could buy a $3 pair of headsets and you're going to get the same issues. Um, yeah, I'm happy with how the level of comfort that they have. Um, I've worn them for extended periods. I think the longest I've worn them so for so far has been about four hours straight. And I haven't had too many issues any more than I've had with other headsets. I mean, because you do get that problem where when you first put on these even, they feel light, they feel comfortable, but then after a while it's like they start clamping. It feels like they really start pushing on your ears and things. Uh, but these are actually better than my previous headset uh, when it comes to that. And overall comfort, I'm not getting the problems I was saying with like chafing the edges of my ears and things. Um, some headsets can really make a mess of them. So level of comfort is also going to depend on a few things as well, which is including size of your head, size of your ears, and stuff like that. Um, so to summarize, I'm going to say, I think the build quality is okay. Sound quality in terms of the microphone is what you make of it using built-in apps and settings. Uh, I can't demonstrate the audio quality to you of the headset. You're just going to have to take it on my word that I'm quite happy with the headset. Like I said, um, you know, if I'm playing a game like Dauntless, for example, um, a, a big part of games is situational awareness through audio. So if, say, we're hunting the behemoth or it runs away and we're going to look for it, if it's over there and I can hear it, rah, I know it is over there. But whether it's actually 7.1, and now it's not true 7.1, that's virtual, because, you know, real 7.1, you would have a whole, like, if you look at a surround sound setup, you've got, say, six speakers and a subwoofer that kind of thing or five speakers and a subwoofer you know, the, the subwoofer is usually or the you know the, gives you the base and it's the point one of most of these speaker setups even like stereo 2.1 it's two speakers and a subwoofer hence 2.1 um where these are literally two speakers in the headset so it is a stereo setup and the virtual comes from like that sonic thing i was showing you on the desktop uh where it virtualizes it it tries to go by things like sound quality uh volume things like that position and it does you know a bunch of math and everything to calculate where sound should be and tries to emulate that and what i've noticed with a lot of virtual sound products i mean even come brand name companies like razor and stuff have software that do this i have noticed and you can get videos and things now a lot of these youtube videos that you see that are dolby surround sound tests or 7.1 5.1 whatever tests the problem is i think YouTube only does stereo audio. So even then, if you listen to these tests, it's going to be your hardware emulating any surround sound. And with a lot of these products, I've noticed when you do get a virtual surround sound going, um, you hear left and right really well. You'll hear things behind you, moving behind you really well. 
but things that are in front of you, it's like they don't, if a sound is out here, like, you know, a grenade explodes out in front of you on the screen, it'll sound more like it's here, like just in front of your ears or, or right on your ears. So it's like almost like these virtual surround sound, sounds, the sound starts from here back. So I tend myself to just go with regular stereo. Um, but it was also, it depends on the applications you're using, the game, the support. So if you've got a virtual surround sound headset, it's a good idea to go into your game, click through the options and see, because a lot of them will have settings like the TV, headphones, surround sound, and stuff like that. And also, again, like with the, the microphone settings, experiment with those to see if they work. If you're not getting the virtual surround sound, don't necessarily blame the hardware because these things, are, it's like a, um, a symbiotic relationship. A lot of these products only work as well as the software they're plugged into. And that can be yeah, audio center control panels or game software, your media players, and that kind of thing. And as I said, like, for example, you know, if a video on YouTube says it's surround, um, you might get a sort of virtual surround effect, but a lot of that is just stereo, because stereo is capable of giving you that illusion. Uh, a good example of that is back in the day we before we had surround sound a game like quake 2 um for example using dirty old stereo headset you really got good positional audio i used to be able to hear people coming in time when they're going to be in front of a door i could hear if they were in front of me or behind me same with games like half-life and that was just literally stereo uh, with what i guess they would market these days as 3d sound even though yeah that's what i stereo Enough of me rambling on. Uh, to summarise, build quality, I'm okay with it for the price. Um, if I was buying a $200 headset, I'd probably not be that impressed, but for $45 Australian dollars, um, I'm okay with it. Sound quality is good. So far, I'm okay with the headset, but again, I wasn't expecting a broadcast quality microphone. So my expectations were realistic. And I've got to say, you could do worse. Honestly, you could end up buying a $150 headset and the sound quality be a lot worse than this one or equal to it. So, but as always, I'm going to recommend that you shop around, you do your research yourself. And yeah, I've got to say, you know, it's got a nice braided cable. That's sort of strong, something I forgot to mention. I've got a lot of length. I mean, I'm sitting up in front of my desktop and you can see I move right across the other side of the room. And I've got room, so you don't have to worry about it snagging. And my cable is actually plugged in um, to my monitor stand. So my the, the, the cable, is this cable here, the plug on the end of it is actually behind my monitors. It's not plugged into the front of my desktop, which is just sitting here um, almost next to my knees. So, yeah, cable length is quite good. Um, I haven't extended that one out, but I have found... Well, let's, let's do this now with the, with the PlayStation one. But you can see this thing here is actually, oh, well, I can't really show it on here, um, but that is much, much shorter than the USB cable. But So that's something also to consider. But also, I believe this plugs directly into a controller. I mean, I've only got a dirty old Xbox. That one's actually a Chinese, you know, 3D gamepad knockoff. Um, so, yeah, I don't have something to plug into it. But, I mean, yeah, you'd. I think in the other consoles, you sort of plug it in the bottom there. Then it goes into... The control box here, but your controller, you're rarely going to be that far away from it. And if you get up and walk away, you're no doubt going to unplug it. But I do believe that's something to be aware of, that the console cable is shorter than the USB cable on the PC. Um, I haven't tried these with other USB devices, but I believe it should be fine if I plug this into like an Android box or a um, Android TV or something, something else that um, supports sound out through USB, especially because... Most devices do because, yeah, like the, this, you know, this has got your sound card built in or a chip or something. But, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I've got to say, um, if you're on a budget, get it. Might as well summarise with that. Um, there's not much more I can really say about it. Um, bang for buck kind of deal, Leo. So, yeah, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope this has been helpful for you, especially if you're an Aussie and you are on a budget. Uh, I, I really need to get back into doing more reviews and things because I have bought hardware over the last 12 months that I've planned on reviewing and never got around to, like my mechanical keyboard, uh, my new PC build, my RTX 2060, stuff like that. So I will try and do that and help. If you're interested, I might start buying, just buying budget products um, and giving them a review. 
So, yeah, leave a comment below on what you think, um, what you'd like to see, and we'll see if we can follow up on that because I am trying to get back into actively uh, producing content. Anyway, enough out of me. Hope this video has been helpful. I would rate these for the price. I would give them a 8 out of 10, just quite simply because of the, the faffing about you've got to do to get the quality to an acceptable level. But, yeah. Um, so for any parents who want to watch this or something, yeah, do, I, I would recommend they would be a good stocking filler for Christmas or well, an actual present. I mean, $45 isn't exactly what I'd call a stocking filler. That is more like something you'd wrap up and stick under the tree. But we're getting to that time of year. And yeah, I should have said this at the start, but I'm not sponsored. I don't monetize my videos. So I'm not like getting paid to do this. It was just we needed a new headset. So I went out and bought one. Okay. So, all right. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. Um, usual YouTube crap. If you like the video, hit like, hit subscribe, hit notifications. If you didn't like it, downvote it. I don't care. Just give me some love and attention. Um, but yeah, if you want to keep up to date with my videos, you will need to hit the notification button so that YouTube will advise you when a new video comes along. And I will be trying to increase the quality of my content, hopefully. Like this video here will actually, I'll put some effort into editing it down and then cut out hopefully a lot of the bullshit like this all right then so we'll see you on the next video that's all i've got to say for now um yeah wrap it out bye bye damn it what can i do oh.